Hi, folks. Um, we're going to begin our presentation on uh, Cisco UCS Manager XML API, uh, an introduction and a quick overview. Looks like we got a pretty good crowd. Uh, my name is Jason Shaw. I'm a technical marketing engineer with the uh, Cisco product group focused on the UCS platform and systems management. So I work with partners that are interested in integrating with UCS or automating. Um, I have uh, Jeff Foster with me as well. Um, he'll, he'll probably introduce himself. I'm a Jeff Foster. I'm also a technical marketing engineer focused on systems management. In particular, I focus on our standalone C-series management, or IMC management. So I'll be talking a little bit after Jason. Great. Great, so uh, just uh, I'm going to skip through these pretty quickly. Hopefully, uh, how many folks do we have here today that use the UCS platform already and familiar with the foundation? Excellent. Great, so uh, again, uh, we'll focus a little bit on the UCS, the B-series side, the traditional UCS, um, and talk about from a systems management aspect, uh, a little bit about our API, uh, how you can automate tasks or integrate with the UCS system for common things like monitoring or gathering inventory, orchestration. Uh, a quick summary of, of how the UCS system is different and why you might want to integrate and why it's you know, such a powerful system. We've taken the logical server configuration, uh, the things that you do when you get a new server out of the box, to the time that it's ready to deploy the OS and the applications, which can, the, the time it takes for one customer can vary greatly to the time it takes another customer. But these are a, a good set of the tasks that we've been able to abstract from the physical hardware and uh, basically provide in what we call a service profile, a software abstraction that can be templated, um, built into policies, and allow you to quickly you know, deploy new servers or make change to many servers that you might have in management, keep configuration consistent and such. So again, we take a, a set of policies or templates, individual um, you know, logical server configuration functions, things like MAC addresses and worldwide names for network access or storage access, RAID controller configuration. Um, today, We've got a, a quick snapshot of, of the management interface for UCS. So on the previous slide, we had Fabric Interconnect sitting at the top of the solution. That's where our management software runs. There's a web server, um, and under the covers, there's what we call a data management engine um, that basically models out all of the physical infrastructure, all the physical components, the inventory, and the logical configuration in an, in an XML hierarchy. It's, uh, there's relationships built. Um, everything is modeled out. You know, when you turn the system on and UCS Manager comes on and looks at the hardware, it's identifying all the hardware, and there's, a, again, a, a big XML hierarchy associated with that. Um, that model is really part of the reason that we can have so much, uh, you know, software programmability with this system. So at the top of the solution, running in the Fabric Interconnects is an XML API. That's the front door to get in and, and configure the system. Uh, we have a CLI and a GUI that we've built that are just clients to the API, and we have a number of um, you know, SDKs, for example, a, a Python library, a PowerShell library, to make it easy to learn how to automate or to discover the XML documents that you need to send to the system to program something, to query information, uh, or to program a, an individual change or a massive amount of change on the system. You can see we've got uh, a lot of integrations that exist today with various partners. We have customers, partners that kind of want to build a custom solution. We have a lot of tools and SDKs available for that, and that's really what we'll, we'll focus on in this session. So this next slide, uh, what are some of the features that we have uh, with our XML API? Um, again, I mentioned there's a web server that runs in the Fabric Interconnects um, with, uh, with something as rudimentary as Linux curl. You could create an XML document post it to the system to log in and establish a session with the API, um, maintain that session by um, using your cookie and refreshing that cookie. Um, it's, again, it, everything is XML-based and transactional. So the, the way that you log into the system, query for something, or make change is literally just exchanging XML documents. And again, the tools that we'll talk about make it really easy to discover that XML, what you might want to uh, use for automating. Um, there's role-based authentication in the system. Um, 
We won't be covering the built-in object browser, but that's also a very interesting tool for developers. We, uh, you can uh, address your browser to the UCS system and put slash visore.html and actually gain access to a web interface that lets you browse this XML uh, database. Query for XML objects, discover the type of syntax needed to you know, query for some of these objects. Um, all of our Java-style documentation, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. A lot of our, um, our model documentation is automatically generated. We have something called a platform emulator that I'll, I'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, for a developer, that's a great tool you can download, deploy into your laptop using uh, VMware Fusion or, or VMware Workstation, and have what looks like a full-blown UCS system uh, running on your laptop. It's the actual UCS manager software with a layer of hardware emulation that we've developed. That's been a very, uh, very useful tool for developers who may not have access to UCS hardware or may not want to do their testing on a live system. They can use the emulator for all of their testing um, long before they have access to, uh, to the live hardware to actually vet their code out. So some common use cases. I, I work with a lot of customers that are interested in monitoring UCS. Um, maybe they have uh, you know, an existing framework that they've built and they want to add the ability to monitor the UCS hardware for faults and alerts. Um, configuration backup, firmware management, orchestration is another hot topic. Um, folks want, you know, that, are, that have used our UCS manager GUI to perform tasks and uh, they find that they're going in and you know, performing some of the same tasks over and over again. How can I automate that? How can I create a script um, so that I can run that from the CLI you know, when needed, maybe in a, uh, in a, uh, a weekly report of some sort. Automatic issue remediation. Um, maybe I want to monitor UCS for a certain fault type and then take action if that uh, particular fault occurs. Um, maybe I have a hardware failure and I'd like to um, monitor for a certain type of hardware failure and move a service profile from one piece of hardware to another. Um, back in that previous slide where you saw the service profile concept, again, we, we take all the logical configuration for a server and we capture it in basically an XML construct. Um, when hardware fails in the middle of the night, uh, how long does it take to recover that physical server? And, and with UCS, we can take that XML construct and move it from one physical server to another and basically program um, a new server to look just like the server that had failed. Those are some of the use cases, I think, that, that really differentiate UCS for us. So a little bit about the, the, um, the XML model. I mentioned earlier, again, uh, everything in the system under the covers is an, is an, a, um, an XML managed object. Um, everything down, you know, from a physical perspective, the physical blades, the adapters, the individual memory DIMMs or CPUs, all modeled out in a hierarchy. There's another branch with all the logical configuration, your service profile definitions, your uh, the way that your virtual NICs or your virtual HBAs are configured. Um, again, all, all of that modeled out uh, dynamically. I'm going to leave some of these slides in here, I think, for reference at a later point so we have some time for the demos. There's an event channel. So uh, a lot of our uh, partners, for example, um, we have an integration with Microsoft System Center. So we have a uh, System Center Operations Manager, a tool for you know, monitoring systems, latches on to our, logs into our XML API, listens to the event channel for changes, and updates the System Center Operations Manager UI as things happen within the system. It does so in the same way as our UCS Manager GUI. For folks that have used UCS, if you have your UCS Manager GUI open, um, things happen within the system, maybe servers are powered off or powered on or hardware fails. Uh, states will change. They'll actually come across that event channel. And again, um, something that's monitoring that event channel gets those changes and information in real time and can update, you know, again, uh, an integration like System Center. So what type of tools can we use to interface with the API and prevent having to, let's say, use a, a traditional UCS manager GUI or a CLI? What can I use to uh, automate tasks and, uh, and get familiar with that XML model. Uh, how many, any folks here use uh, Microsoft PowerShell, either maybe for managing Windows operating systems? Uh, any folks using the UCS PowerShell library, UCS PowerTool? 
Excellent. Great. So we built a, a PowerShell library, very powerful, um, very well thought out and engineered. We actually take the UCS uh, manager schema files, the, the XML schema files that define what can be read and written to that XML model. We feed that into an engine um, that ultimately uh, builds the .NET library and, and, and code that we need to build our, our PowerShell library. So with each new release of UCS Manager, new schema files are available. You know, we, we can very quickly build a new PowerShell library as new features and functionality become available with UCS. Um, and even before we build new versions of our library, the library is built with both forwards compatibility and backwards compatibility in mind. So I can use a version of the PowerShell library, and if a new version of UCS Manager comes out tomorrow, I can still use that same library um, against that newer version of UCS Manager. So it's, you know, I think, very well engineered from that perspective. Um, PowerShell is a, you know, an object-oriented scripting language that lines up nicely with the fact that UCS is object-oriented with an XML model. Um, rather than a traditional, let's say, a, a Unix shell scripting interface, you're actually querying the system and getting back you know, one or many sets of objects. And you can pipeline those into commands and, and do some, you know, some very powerful things uh, at scale. So actually, here's that automatic code generation that I referred to earlier. Our schema files going into a tool that ultimately delivers our integrations very quickly. This is great for our customers and partners. Again, uh, we don't have to do a full rewrite with each new version of the library that we may want to build. Um, some, of the, uh, some of the objects um, you know, that you can manipulate with the library, uh, realistically, the, the PowerShell library is made up of greater than 1,800 commandlets. It can automate anything in UCS based on the fact that we build it from those schema files. Um, anything that you see in the UCS Manager GUI that's configurable is automatable using this tool. And that being said, we have some great um, commandlets that we've built, some custom commandlets that we've built to make it really easy to learn how to automate. Uh, learn how to automate with PowerShell or even learn how to discover the underlying XML that you need to perform tasks. Even learn how to identify Python code that you might need to perform a task. So we have a Python SDK, we have a PowerShell SDK. We've kind of built a, a common set of functionality in those tools. So I can, I can use the PowerShell library to discover, you know, again, Python commands that I might want to run. I can use the Python library to discover PowerShell commands that I might want to run. So kind of, kind of an interesting uh, way that we've developed those. So regarding the PowerShell library, I, I'd say the most important commandlet that we built is called convert to UCS. Uh, that's a tool that can go out and monitor the UCS Manager GUI, allow you to uh, create a, a change in the UCS Manager GUI, and then give you the PowerShell equivalent. That's the, the easiest way for um, a junior or senior administrator to very quickly you know, learn how to automate something in UCS. Uh, day one. H have you used the convert to UCS commandlet? Excellent. Great. So I'm actually going to demo this really quick. Uh, these are a couple of common use cases. I can use convert to UCS commandlet to monitor the GUI, discover some XML. Um, I can actually, um, I can use the convert to UCS commandlet and run it against an XML backup that I've taken from a live system, and it will produce for me a, a script of all of the PowerShell commands necessary to recreate that entire environment. Kind of a powerful thing if you become a new administrator with PowerShell and you you wish you had discovered convert to UCS commandlet as you were building out your new environment, um, you can still use convert to UCS commandlet to you know, generate yourself a script uh, from, from how you built that system. I mentioned the platform emulator earlier. So again, this is the UCS manager software packaged up as a VM um, with a layer of hardware emulation that we've added. So this is a great tool for a developer to, again, um, get familiar with UCS in the management interface but also get familiar with automation tools and SDKs like our PowerShell library or our Python library without needing access to live hardware. Um, some of the features here, again, it's a, it's a VM, so it installs very easily. We run this in our lab. We run many instances of this in our lab um, to learn how to automate against multiple systems. Um, again, it's, it's because it, it actually runs the actual UCS manager software, the, the full XML API is intact. There's an object browser that Visore object browser that I mentioned earlier can be used against the emulator. 
Um, if you have a live system running in production that you really don't want to you know, mess with, you can deploy the platform emulator, point it to that system, and import the configuration, the hardware inventory that that live system has and all the logical configuration. So if you want to have a sandbox to play around on your laptop, you can have it um, import the config from a live system and look just like what you're running in production. So some, some great features, a very useful tool. Um, and we've had that platform emulator since we originally launched UCS. And it's gone from a, a tool that our engineering teams use to save time all the way to um, a sales tool and, and certainly a development tool. So I'm going to do a, a quick demo of that convert to UCS commandlet in action. Great, so again, imagine that I've um, downloaded the, our PowerShell library, installed it on a Windows machine. Um, I'm running the convert to UCS commandlet. So this commandlet will, on that local system, go out and find the log file that the UCS manager GUI writes to, latch onto it, and listen uh, basically for configuration commands to flow through the, okay, to flow through the log file. I'm going back in the UCS Manager GUI, creating a VLAN, VLAN 22 in this case, with an ID of 22. Now when I go back into my convert to UCS commandlet window, there's my PowerShell commands that will automate that exact same task. And the, you know, the, the key parameters that can be variableized are the ID, the ID of 22, and the VLAN name, VLAN 22. I can literally take this text, put it in a text editor, you know, change those values, and send this command syntax right back into the system and create a different VLAN. That concept applies to sort of any construct in the system. I think this, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna play this full video, but I'm creating, um, in this example, a boot policy. Slightly different output coming back, we support transactions. This, a transaction can create a very structured XML document with many, many tasks inside, even all the way to configuring a full UCS domain and send that as one transaction to the UCS manager another very powerful way to automate tasks. So I want to leave some time uh, for Jeff. Um, this, the platform emulator, you know, our SDKs, all these tools are, are free, for, free to download from our communities page, which I think you'll see a slide on here shortly. Thank you, Jason. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about IMC. Uh, everybody here familiar with our standalone C-series, C-series hardware? So what Jason talked about just now is UCS Manager, really optimized around a data center environment. But there's a lot of environments that are non-data center environments or reasons why a customer might not want to use UCS Manager. Uh, if you look at the standalone world, uh, you typically have a baseboard management controller. Uh, and to manage that, you might use IPMI. Uh, you might script via the CLI, but we've actually implemented uh, a consistent XML API for our standalone C-Series, so we leverage the same methods, the same classes that you'll see in the UCS XML API. And as a result of that, we have programmatic control of a standalone C-Series server. So I can do everything from deploy a BIOS, uh, communication policies, uh, even configure the RAID controller all via an XML API and our, um, our SDKs as well. So if we look at uh, some of the capabilities of um, the PowerShell library that we have, in addition to obviously the XML API, I can, I can programmatically uh, configure and deploy a system all the way uh, through an OS deployment because we support scriptable vMedia. So you can use the XML API to mount an image, uh, change the boot order, power on the server, and uh, no longer you're relying on something like Pixie for OS provisioning in an environment. So we've taken the construct that Jason mentioned around the XML API for UCS and moved that over to our standalone C-Series. So in version 2.0, uh, we, uh, we did get 
end-to-end uh, -end, uh, capability to manage uh, C-Series server, including that RAID controller. So we have uh, the convert to uh, for IMC as well. Uh, we don't monitor the, the uh, GUI log files. We don't have the same GUI log files in our standalone C-Series, but we do support pipeline capabilities. So I'm gonna show a demo here of how we can, in effect, take a running standalone C-Series, uh, deploy a configuration via the web interface, and then go out, use our PowerShell library to query the system configuration and generate a script that we can use to deploy many other systems. So uh, the pipeline capability that I'll be showing is also supported with our UCS PowerShell SDK. So I've logged in here, and I'm going to run a query, get IMC BIOS settings. And, and what this is going to do, uh, and I'm going to run that in hierarchically. So as Jason mentioned, there's a hierarchy to the API itself. And that's, that's also the case with the IMC uh, API. Now I've got all of the BIOS settings uh, for this particular system. Now if I were to run that same command and pipeline that to convert to IMC commandlet, uh, and I'm going to output that to PS1 just because it's a little bit easier, a PS1 file, just because it's a little bit easier to read. And it takes a few seconds because I'm going to query that BIOS. Uh, in the case of a, a full system configuration, it takes about a minute to do that to, and create the PS1 script. And we're going to open up this PS1 in a notepad. And you can see here I've got a script that I can then take and push into other systems for a consistent BIOS configuration. Now imagine the power of being able to do that across potentially hundreds of systems on hundreds of sites, including your, uh, your RAID controller. So from end to end, you do get full configurability now with the standalone C-Series XML API. So we have a community site, not only with the SDKs, uh, PowerShell, Python, uh, we have our XML API programmer's guide out there. Uh, for the C-Series, I know we've got about 150 examples uh, so if you're looking for sample code to use, a raw XML, uh, we've got that resource. Uh, so first two links here uh, are the ones uh, that I recommend you go to. There is a third uh, slash UCSPE for the platform emulator that Jason had mentioned. So you can get all the resources that we discussed, including uh, PowerShell, Python, uh, SDKs. I think we got one or two minutes. Are there any questions? I know we didn't cover UCS Central. For anyone that's interested in UCS Central, that's a, you know, a, a um, product for managing multiple UCS domains. Um, we have a PowerShell library for Central. That's another great use case for UCS PE. If you're interested in what managing multiple UCS domains looks like in Central, you can download the UCS Central OVA, deploy it, and register multiple platform images to UCS Central, and then use the PowerShell library for Central to administer, make change, query systems. Uh, any questions from anyone? So we've got some cards with the URLs. Um, we're running uh, actually the PowerShell labs back in uh, the left-hand side, all the way back at one of the stations. So anyone that's interested in getting some hands-on with the UCS Manager PowerShell library, we have it back there. We could certainly have some sidebar conversations. Um, and there's additional labs down in the walk-in self-paced lab in the world of solutions for UCS Manager, UCS Central, and UCS Director, if you're interested. So all those resources are here all week. Yeah. So thank you for your time. We'll be yeah. around if you have any questions. Thanks, everybody. One -on -one.